What is up everyone, my name is Jack Sapple, back again with another video, and today I'm here with my NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 review, and um, yeah, let's get into it because I honestly have no more words to describe how good these shows are, so we're just going to get right into it. So, we open up the show with the NXT Tag Team titles on the line, we had the Undisputed Era, made up of Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly, defending their titles against Mustache Mountain, and yeah, this match was just fucking great, like, oh my god, an awesome way to kick off the show, and um, like, some of the spots in this were just really great, like, um, Tyler Bates' strength like, oh, he was doing some crazy shit in this match. Like, he was swinging Roderick Strong while having O'Reilly in a fireman's carry. I think I saw him do it at the UK show, like, a few months ago. But he did it here, and it just looked great. Like, Mustache Mountain is such a great team, along with uh, the Undisputed Era. Like, the chemistry that these two teams have are just fucking great, man. Like, um, he even broke up um, Roderick Strong's submission hold by throwing O'Reilly at him with one arm, like... Tyler Bate just decided to turn into the Incredible Hulk for this night, which, you know, I don't have a problem with. And also, Trent Seven as well did really well in this match. Everyone brought out the best in each other. And um, there was an inside heel hook by O'Reilly on Tyler's hurt leg. And while that was going on, uh, Trent Seven went to uh, get grab the towel and throw the towel in because how they lost their NXT Tag Team titles on an episode of NXT was um, how Tyler Bate threw in the towel because Trent Seven was just in so much pain in the submission hold, and he just couldn't see his friend hurt for that longer. But Trent decided, you know what, fuck the towel, tagged himself in. But unfortunately for Mustache Mountain, the Undisputed Era retained their NXT Tag Team title. I thought this was just a fantastic opener, very fast-paced, um, just great kickouts, great maneuvers. Tyler Bates was fantastic in this, and Trent Seven was great as well. Like, just two great teams going at it, you know, there's, you don't get much better than that, and what was also great was after the match, the War Raiders, um, is it Hanson and Rowe? I, I've probably fucked their names up, but um, yeah, the War Raiders came in and uh, decided to beat the shit out of Undisputed Era, I think like Kyle O'Reilly just went fucking flying, and um, one of the other members of War Raiders just like dropped him, it was really cool, so um, yeah. That's probably going to be the next match for the tag team titles, unless they do like, um, unless they do some sort of a War Games match, which of course the next takeover is going to be War Games, uh, the night before Survivor Series. So they'll probably be involved in that. I mean, imagine War Raiders in War Games. Oh my God, that will be that will be crazy. That will be crazy. And then afterwards we get the Velveteen Dream versus EC3. In a pretty so in a pretty fucking great match, I will say. Uh, Velveteen Dream uh, had um, call me up Vince on his ass. He he always has the craziest tights, man. And he had call me up Vince on his ass, which um, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if um, on Raw and SmackDown we do actually see the Velveteen Dream get called up. Um, but I have to mention as well, both of these guys are in such great shape. Like, Velveteen and especially EC3. Like, my God. So, um, Velveteen, for some reason, I don't know if it's just me, but in the beginning of the match, like the first half, he was overselling a lot of stuff. I don't know that was if that was just from what I was seeing, but for me, he was like overselling. Like, even when EC3 threw the fucking uh, jacket back at him, and he's just a sell of it, which is great. And um, Velveteen was even doing um, that thing Shawn Michaels used to do when he would lay on the turnbuckle and someone would kick him in the guts and he would just lift his legs up, like stuff like that. Also, uh, the Velveteen Dream hit his like weird inverted DDT on the rampway, and which was really brutal. Which was a really brutal spot, and I loved how um, Dream brought um, a water bottle out and threw some water in EC3's face after in after EC3 threw him into the pool during the build up for this match. They did a thing on NXT where EC3 and the Velveteen Dream, I think it was like at his mansion or some shit like that. They were talking. And EC3 threw Velveteen Dream in his pool, which was uh, kind of funny. Uh, EC3 hit a great superplex. And, um, God, how good is Velveteen Dream's, like, rolling Death Valley drivers? They're so good. And he even did one 
on the apron. And not only that, he hits his top rope elbow while he's laying on the apron as well. And Velveteen Dream picks up the win. So, um, yeah, it's always nice to see Velveteen Dream pick up a win in any situation. I mean, EC3 could have easily won this match. But uh, Velveteen Dream can definitely use a win. I feel like Velveteen is one of those guys where his character is so strong. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses. He still looks good going into it. So, um, yeah. But still, EC3 looked really good as well. So it didn't really hurt anyone's momentum, but Velveteen Dream's momentum is obviously going to be uh, a lot more significant than EC Freeze at the moment. So after that match, we saw um, Matt Riddle was in the crowd, and um, yeah, which was like, oh shit, because it had been rumored for the, a few weeks that Matt Riddle was going to be signed to WWE because he was finishing off some indie shows. Uh, I think he had an indie show like the night before. Or something like that, or a few nights before. And, uh, yeah, Matt Riddle, uh, he was a star in The Ultimate Fighter, and he eventually had a career in professional wrestling, and became a massive name for himself on the indie scene. And, yeah, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do on NXT. I feel like he can do some just awesome, have some awesome matches. Like, imagine, like, him against, like, a really stiff wrestler, like, that would be crazy. Imagine him and Brock Lesnar having a match. Oh, God, that would just be... That would be fucking brutal. You know, former MMA guys going out, that'd be great. And then we had the North American Championship match between Adam Cole and Ricochet. Another fantastic match. Um, the drop kick by Ricochet. I think Adam Cole uh, flew in the air, and then Ricochet catched him with a drop kick. And just Ricochet is so talented, man. Just the things he can do. Like, he's he's one of my favorites on NXT at the moment. Uh, Cole hit a really great backstabber. And the spot of the night, in my opinion, one of the spots of the night, um, Ricochet goes for a, a springboard moonsault. And Adam Cole perfectly super kicks him in the face mid-move. Mid like, I was just like, holy shit. Because he got it on such accuracy as well. Like, it wasn't like he kind of hit him, like, on the chest or anything. No, square in the chin. Like, it was it was fantastic. And then they had a great strike fest with each other, and um, Ricochet hit a reverse Frankensteiner, and he could have gotten the win on that, on that move. But the thing is, Ricochet loves pulling out whatever he can to make the fans go, oh, wow. Because, you know, that's the type of person Ricochet is. As much as he loves winning matches, he also loves making uh, the fans kind of go, holy shit, at the things he can do. And it, it fits his character, which I really liked. Uh, there was a Hanukkah runner to the outside, and then he hit his 630 big fucking spinny move, uh, Splash, which just looks great. And Ricochet wins the NXT North American Championship in a fantastic match. Adam Cole... Uh, of course, has been really great as uh, the first ever North American champion. And uh, he really uh, held up, especially that super kick in midair. Oh, my God. But Ricochet just continues to impress. And I'm so happy uh, he's now champion in WWE. I'm actually really glad they introduced a second title to uh, NXT. Because they kind of have a, like a mid-card division now. Uh, which is really great. So, yeah, I'm happy to see Ricochet uh, win the North American title in an absolutely great match. So, afterwards, we get the NXT Women's Championship match between Shayna Baszler and Kari Sane. We have a rematch from last year's May Young Classic Finals, and I really enjoyed it, man. It was really damn good. And um, Shayna Baszler is just such a fantastic heel. Like, she is just downright vicious. Like, she was aiming at Kari Sane's foot, like, she was twisting it, and stomping on it, like, oh, my Lord, and, um, Kari Sane hit a great spear on, uh, Shayna Baszler as well, and, um, Kari Sane hit her top rope elbow, and when she, by the way, she has one of the best elbows in the business right now, once she hit that, she goes to the pinfall, and she kicks out at two, which, uh, was actually quite shocking, I thought, um, that it would have, like, ended the match, but I guess not, um, but 
Kari gets the ropes after being uh, locked into her like submission hole, like like the clutch that she does. And then Shayna Baszler locks it in again, but Kari rolls out of it, uh, puts Shayna Baszler's shoulders on the mat for the free count, and wins the NXT Women's Championship, which I was not expecting at all. I going in, I thought, oh, Shane is going to retain. Surely, like, I, I thought, like, for sure that Shayna was going to retain because she's been on such a big roll uh, ever since she won the title, and I figured, oh, it's going to be like Irashira or something like that, or who, or whoever wins the the 2018 May Young Classic. But I guess that's not the case, and you know what? I'm fine with that. It does make sense, you know. Kari Sane seems seems to be the one person Shayna Baszler cannot top. So this could be an interesting feud if they have a rematch at TakeOver War Games, which there's definitely a good chance of that happening, or at um, WWE Evolution, uh, because that title will be defended there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting feud, because I'm pretty sure Shayna Baszler's not going to be happy with losing that match, especially with the way that it ended. Um, yeah, she's definitely going to want that rematch for sure. So that will most likely take place on Evolution or at War Games. And um, then we get to the main event. A last man standing match for the NXT Championship between Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Originally, this was meant to be a triple threat match with Aleister Black. However, unfortunately for Aleister Black, he got injured and they had to uh, remove him from the match and take some time off. And instead, they made it a one-on-one -on -one last man standing match. And you know what? I'm not going to complain about it because this, as like their last two matches, was just incredible. This is feud of the year. There's, there's no argument to it. It is the feud of the year, man. So, um, not even, like the bell didn't even ring. And Gargano went right after Ciampa, which, yeah, it's just, you could tell he wants to finish this feud with Tommaso Ciampa and finally beat him. Um, and so, like, Tommaso Ciampa just hits a running knee to the face, uh, like, with his knee, the knee with his knee brace on, which, yeah, that, that'd be a fun move to take. And, um... Johnny Gargano ends up throwing Champa into like a steel chair that's wedged between the ropes, which um, yeah, I just went ow, which I said plenty of times. Uh, there was three power bomb backstabbers, and uh, after that, Champa sits down to wait for the count. He grabs a chair and basically just sits down in the ring, only to get super kicked in the face by Gargano. That was great, and uh, a running cannonball off the apron is meant like. Johnny Gargano, Johnny, mate, you need to stop going for that fucking running cannonball, because I swear to God, he misses it every time. He misses it every time. Some people don't learn, man. Um, Champa then decides to tear the ring up again, just like in their last match, uh, only for Gargano to shoot a fire extinguisher in his face. And uh, Gargano has the crutch just... I love all these callbacks, man. Like, they remember what went right in their previous matches, so they're like, fuck it, why not do it again? Because constantly changing up your match, I mean, yeah, that is good. I mean, this match was different from the other two, but also calling back to the things that did work for you is a smart move as well. And so he grabs a crutch and, like, hits him a few times with it. I think Champa hit Gargano a few times. Uh, and Gargano gets revenge on Champa from their last match, and hits him with a DDT to the exposed wood on the ring. And so uh, Gargano accidentally super kicks an official on the outside. It reminded me of when Shawn Michaels did that to one of the like uh, timekeepers at WrestleMania 12. And holy shit, the spot where um, Gargano is like leaning on the barricade where like the timekeeper's area is, and Johnny Gargano puts a chair over his face, and just rams his knee and just destroys that uh, that area. Like, oh my god. And the thing that was great about this as well, he like grabs one of the timekeepers and just throws it on Gargano and just grabs whatever he can and just throws it on top. Like it it was it was a smart move, I will say. But uh, Gargano ended up getting up at nine and uh, there was a super kick. Uh, which uh, put someone through both tables. I can't remember who the person was. And um, they fought back to the to the stage. 
And how this all ended was uh, Gargano handcuffed Champa to the stage, uh, make sure he doesn't escape. He hits two knees on him, but when he hits the third running knee, he kind of runs a bit too far. He like absolutely nails Champa with the knee, but because there was so much momentum from running, he like fucking falls into um, the outside area. And just crashes, like, not through the table, but onto a table. And, like, there was some other stuff on it. And he just pretty much fucks himself over. And so, they're both, the referee's counting. Both men are down. And as soon as nine happens, Tommaso Ciampa gets back up and retains the NXT Championship. A great ending to a great match. And I honestly feel like they're going to go for one more match. I don't... I feel like TakeOver War Games is going to be the match that finally settles it all. Like, it, it has to be, sure. Like, Gargano can pick a team, and Chamba can pick a team, and, like, if Gargano gets the the victory, he wins the title, I don't know. It's just an idea, or they just have one more fight. I don't think it'll be in the main event this time, but still, a War Games will most likely be in the main event, and um, Gargano will finally win the NXT Championship. That's my prediction, because... This this has to end surely with Johnny Gargano winning the NXT title. So yeah, that was just my prediction for the future. I'm really looking forward to what they're gonna do going forward into war games. So yeah, once again, another fantastic show from NXT. Um you know what? Let's do match of the night and ratings, because why not? NXT is on par with other companies now, so why not? So uh match of the night. Shit, as much as I liked the main event, don't get me wrong, there was so much good shit on this show. Main event was great, opening match was great, but i got to give it to the North American title match. Adam Cole and Ricochet did a great job, and also seeing Ricochet win the title just made it better for me. Uh, how am I going to rate this show? 9.5 out of 10. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Please watch it. Just just watch it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts on the NXT TakeOver show. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. You'll be glad you did. Twitter and Instagram's at JackamanLaw for anyone who wants to check me out there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm out in 3, 2, 1.